In the opening scene, the chart for Quest Coin reveals a sudden bearish trend over the past few days. This has caused widespread panic among cryptocurrency traders, many of whom have taken to community forums to share their concerns. Over time, a growing number of these traders are beginning to suspect that QuestCoin might be a scam. Some traders have shared their suspicions in the community, suggesting that an organization is manipulating cryptocurrency prices. In contrast, others argue that such an organization doesn't even exist. This has gradually sparked a debate within the community. In a city filled with towering skyscrapers, a wealthy man chuckles at the community's <laughs> discussions. He's pleased by what the charts reveal. This man owns a company named One, known for manipulating cryptocurrency. The wealthy man disclosed that he intentionally chose an obscure yet appealing name for his investment to drive the charts upward. This strategy lured small traders making them believe they were earning profits, only for him to subsequently siphon all their earnings. The wealthy man, Jung Pilgu, the chairman of One, is elated at how effortlessly he earned money from those small traders. He praises team leader Yu for flawlessly executing the operation. This reveals the team leader's full name as Yu Biom. Jung commends Yu Biom for his expertise in manipulating traders' mindsets. Eager to reward him, Jung offers to gift him the most expensive car. However, Yu Biom declines requesting cash instead. Jung is taken aback by Yu Biom's response. Jung continues to praise Yu Biom for his fearlessness, even suggesting that Yu Biom possesses psychopathic tendencies, a trait that Jung finds intriguing. He agrees to reward Yu Biom with cash, but with the condition that Yu Biom ensures the job is done perfectly. As he speaks, Jung's gaze settles on an injured man bound by rope. At the dock, a staff member from the One organization kicks the injured man demanding to know how he discovered the location of their office. The injured man divulged that someone named X had sent the office address to a group chat. The injured man pleaded for mercy, apologizing for his actions. He explained that he approached their office in anger after losing 300 million won. Desperately, he continued to beg, mentioning he has a daughter to care for and that he cannot die there. The staff appeared to empathize with him, but out of nowhere, a kick landed on the injured man's face sending him flying. The kicker was revealed to be Yu Biom, who asserted that the injured man was lying about having a daughter. The staff apologized to Yu Biom for showing empathy towards the injured man. Yu Biom picked up a steel pipe, intent on completing his task flawlessly. He remarked that they wouldn't be able to make money if they felt pity for everyone, since every person in such situations has their own personal reasons. Yu Biom finished his task and checked his bank account, finding a deposit of 300 million won from Chairman Jung. Yet he didn't appear content. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Do you trust crypto? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. Later in the past, we get to a flashback of his college days. Feeling betrayed and angry, Yu Biom confronted his father about the investment. His father assured him that this was a guaranteed way to make money quickly and urged Yu Biom to be patient. However, Yu Biom was skeptical and worried about his sister's future. He argued that investing in something so volatile was irresponsible, especially with money meant for their sister's education. As the days passed, Yu Biom's father continued to check the cryptocurrency's price, seemingly confident in its success. Yu Biom grew increasingly frustrated and anxious, as he watched the price fluctuate wildly, he couldn't believe that his father had risked their financial stability on such a speculative investment. One day, Yu Biom's father excitedly announced that the price of extra coin had surged and they were on the brink of making a fortune. Yu Biom couldn't hide his anger and disappointment. He argued that they should sell immediately and secure their gains before the price plummeted. Despite Yu Biom's protests, his father refused to sell, believing that the price would continue to rise. Yu Biom's frustration reached its breaking point, and he accused his father of being reckless and selfish. He couldn't understand how his father could prioritize this risky investment over his sister's education and their financial stability. In the end, Yu Biom's worst fears were realized as the price of extra coin crashed, wiping out their entire investment. Yu Biom's father was devastated, realizing the gravity of his mistake. Yu Biom's anger and resentment deepened as he saw his sister's dreams of education shattered. This traumatic experience would shape Yu Biom's attitude towards money and investments, driving him to become a ruthless manipulator in the world of cryptocurrency, where he would stop at nothing to accumulate wealth and power. His thirst for revenge against those who had wronged him would drive his actions in the years to come. The Lone Shark's arrival at the funeral was a harsh reminder of the dire situation Yu Biom and his sister found themselves in. With their father gone and a mountain of debt to repay, the future looked bleak. Yu Biom couldn't believe the extent of his father's recklessness, as it had not only ruined their financial stability, but it also put them at the mercy of ruthless creditors. Yu Biom's sister was devastated by the loss of their father and the grim 
grim reality of their financial predicament. She blamed their father for their suffering and felt trapped by the debts he had left behind. Yu Biom, however, was determined not to let this situation define their lives. He knew that they had to find a way out of the debt and secure their future. He decided to take matters into his own hands and began exploring ways to repay the loans and rebuild their lives. Over the years, Yu Biom's relentless pursuit of wealth and power in the world of cryptocurrency became his way of seeking revenge against those who had wronged him and his family. He was driven by a deep-seated desire to never be vulnerable again and to ensure that he and his sister would never have to suffer because of someone else's mistakes. His experiences with his father's financial mismanagement and the subsequent hardships had shaped Yu Biom into a ruthless, and calculating individual, willing to do whatever it took to achieve his goals. He had learned the harsh lesson that in a world driven by money, one had to be willing to manipulate and deceive to survive and thrive. This mindset would lead him down a dark and dangerous path as he climbed the ranks of the cryptocurrency world, ultimately becoming the mastermind behind the manipulation quest coin. Yu Biom's encounter with Chairman Young at the high-class pub in Gangnam held a profound significance that would resonate within him for a long time. The swanky pub with its dimly lit interior and plush leather seats, created an ambience of opulence and exclusivity that contrasted sharply with Yu Bayom's own circumstances. The soft jazz music playing in the background set the tone for a meeting that would leave a lasting mark on Yu Bayom's life. As Chairman Jung spoke, his voice dripped with arrogance, and his eyes sparkled with the confidence of a man who had it all. He boasted openly about his vast wealth and the unprecedented success of Extra Coin, his cryptocurrency brainchild. Yu Biom couldn't help but feel a seething anger welling up inside him. It was as if the wounds of his family's financial downfall had been freshly reopened, and the salt of injustice had been liberally poured into them. Yu Biom had to sit there and listen as Chairman Jung reveled in the suffering of others, seemingly unaffected by the devastation he had caused to countless families, including including Yu Biom's own. He watched the man's smug expression, his fingers idly tracing patterns on a crystal glass, and felt a surge of bitterness mingled with helplessness. The contrast between Chairman Jung's lavish lifestyle and the misery he had wrought upon others was infuriating. Deep within, Yu Biom grappled with conflicting emotions. On one hand, an overwhelming urge to confront Chairman Jung and make him pay for the pain he had inflicted on Yu Biom and his family threatened to consume him. The bottle of whiskey he held tightly in his hand seemed to symbolize his pent-up rage, its amber contents mirroring the burning desire for revenge that coursed through him. Yet, Yu Biom also realized that an impulsive attack on Chairman Jung in that moment would be reckless, it would likely lead to his own downfall, and jeopardize his chances of ever exacting the revenge he so desperately craved. He had to exercise patience and caution, laying the groundwork for a devastating reckoning that would leave Chairman Jung and his organization in ruins. The encounter with Chairman Jung marked a turning point in Yu Beom's life. It was a moment of awakening that fueled his determination to rise through the ranks of the cryptocurrency world. He yearned for power and influence, not for its own sake, but as a means to an end. The end being the obliteration of Chairman Jung and his fraudulent empire. From that night forward, Yu Beom's journey would be defined by calculated manipulation, ruthless ambition and an unrelenting pursuit of revenge. He would stop at nothing to achieve his goal, knowing that the path he had chosen was fraught with danger, but driven by a fire that had been stoked to an unquenchable intensity. Caught in a whirlwind of conflicting emotions, Yu Biom stood on the precipice of a life-altering decision. The whiskey bottle, a vessel of his simmering rage, felt heavy in his grip. His mind raced, considering the possibility of smashing it against Chairman Jung's smug face. With a shrewd calculation that would define his path, Yu Biom opted for a different approach. He chose to serve the whiskey instead. In a quick moment of improvisation, he declared that the whiskey was a complimentary gift, a toast to the pub's third anniversary. Yu Biom handed the glass to Chairman Jung, his voice masked by an air of cheerful hospitality. Then, as if to leave a breadcrumb trail in this elaborate game of revenge, he politely requested Chairman Jung's business card. Chairman Jung's response was telling. He carelessly tossed the card to the floor, a nonchalant act that spoke volumes about his arrogance. Yu Biom picked up the discarded card, his fingers brushing against the edges, and walked away, his heart pounding with restraint. Killing Chairman Jung at that moment wouldn't rewrite the past, he realized. The timing was crucial, and the card in his hand became a symbol of the future reckoning he would orchestrate. With Chairman Jung's contact details secured, Yu Biom embarked on his relentless journey for revenge. He dove headfirst into researching cryptocurrency, determined to understand its intricacies. In parallel, he took to the streets, gaining not only real fighting experience, but also invaluable insights about his enemies. His life became a whirlwind of meticulous planning, and his whiteboard bore witness to it all. Every detail, every strategy, 
Every move of the One organization was documented. Ubiom had become a master tactician, fueled by an unwavering thirst for vengeance. After three painstaking years, his plan to annihilate One was a fully formed beast. But even as he worked towards his sinister goal, Ubiom couldn't escape reminders of his father's debt, enforced by a ruthless loan shark. Mistakenly viewing Ubiom's familiarity as weakness, the loan shark threatened to involve Ubiom's sister in the debt if payments weren't met on time. In a surge of uncontrollable anger, Ubiom grabbed the loan shark by the throat, his transformation into a harbinger of evil complete. He warned the loan shark, vowing to protect his sister at any cost. Upon arriving at the imposing headquarters of the One Company, Ubiom was struck by the realization that it was one of the top three powerhouses of cryptocurrency manipulation in Korea. Its staff had deep ties to the criminal underworld, collectively responsible for billions in damages. As he gazed at the empire Chairman Jung had constructed, Yu Biom steeled himself to dismantle it brick by brick. At the age of 28, he infiltrated the One Company, his motive unwavering. Revenge. Three months later, Yu Biom's strategic move bore fruit as he secured a position within the heart of One to undermine its influence over cryptocurrency. However, during this time, Chairman Jung remained an enigmatic shadow, never once revealing himself. Yu Biom, undercover as a janitor, overheard a conversation that unraveled a crucial piece of the puzzle. A rotund man advised a client against investing in Peltic's coin, revealing himself as Yo Mingu, a member of strategy team two within the one company. Mingu's irritation grew as Yu Biom focused on his janitorial duties, and in a burst of anger, Mingu attempted to throw a punch. With deft agility, Yu Biom tapped Mingu's leg, causing the fat man to lose balance and tumble to the ground. The stage was set, and Yu Biom's quest for revenge had only just begun. Now, with a vital piece of information in his grasp, Yu Biom, seemingly contrite, offered a well-rehearsed apology, insisting that the incident had been an unfortunate accident. But Mingu, not convinced, stuck to his belief that Yu Biom had intended to trip him. Under Yu Biom's unwavering, intense gaze, a shiver of fear coursed through Mingu, pushing him to hastily exit the scene. Yu Biom, however, seized the opportunity to interject, advising Mingu to invest in Peltic coin without delay, citing the perfect timing. Mingu, his brow furrowed in confusion, couldn't fathom how a mere janitor could possess any meaningful knowledge about cryptocurrency. He dismissed Yu Biom's advice with a silent, how could a mere janitor know anything about cryptocurrency? Just then, an urgent interruption came from a woman named Kim Myung, the strategy team two leader. She beckoned Mingu to join an ongoing conference. As Mingu attempted to shift the blame onto Yu Biom, citing their interrupted conversation as the reason for his tardiness, Kim was well aware of Yu Biom's true identity and his past as a student at one of Korea's top universities. Recognizing the potential value of his insights, she extended an invitation for Yu Biom to join the conference as well. The conference commenced with a discussion centered on Crystal Coin. Kim mi -young explained that it was a small kimchi coin with a market capitalization of 30 billion and a daily trading volume of about 4 billion. She emphasized that the acquisition phase had reached its conclusion, signifying the beginning of a concerted effort to manipulate the coin's price for profit. She unveiled a plan known as Bicycle trading, a scheme where they would artificially inflate the trading volume by buying and selling the coin themselves. Listening attentively, Yu Biom connected the dots and realized their sinister intent, eerily similar to what he suspected they had executed with extra coin. Kim mi Young proposed a strategy to pump up the coin's price, with Mingu suggesting an investment of 10 billion won, hopeful that it would yield double the returns. However, other members of Strategy Team 2 disagreed vehemently, arguing that 15 billion won would be necessary. The room buzzed with heated debate as they clashed over their differing viewpoints. Mingu pleaded with Kim, desperately asking her to trust his judgment when it came to pumping the price of the coin. But in the midst of their heated discussion, Yu Biom, oozing with confidence, boldly intervened with a mere 500,000 won, sending shockwaves through the room. He believed that this relatively small amount could catapult the coin's price to triple its current value. Mingu... Still skeptical of Yu Biom's audacious claim, brushed him aside as a novice who lacked a deep understanding of the intricate cryptocurrency landscape. Yu Biom countered with conviction, asserting that small traders had evolved and become much smarter over time. He stressed that the key lay not in the volume of the investment, but in the timing. Moreover, Yu Biom believed that a significant 90% of the coin's price movement was influenced by trader psychology. Mingu's continued belittling of Yu Biom pushed him to his limits. Frustration surged within him, hardening his voice as he warned Mingu to release his grip, locking eyes with a piercing gaze. Sensing the intensity in Yu Beom's eyes, Mingu reluctantly let go of his hold. Kim stepped in, 
extending an apology to UBOM. She explained that the company couldn't entrust such a crucial operation to a newcomer. Her primary intention in inviting him to the meeting had been to give him a glimpse into the company's inner workings. Suddenly, the conference room's TV flickered to life, and a voice from the speakers addressed Kim, urging her to trust Yu Biom's judgment. It highlighted Yu Biom's exceptional IQ of 150 and his education from one of Korea's top economics universities. It soon became clear that the voice belonged to none other than Chairman Jung. Chairman Jung reluctantly approved Yu Biom's plan, but imposed a daunting one-week deadline. He warned Yu Biom in chilling terms that failure would result in him becoming fish food. His words left no room for doubt. In the background of Chairman Jung's room, an ominous aquarium revealed a man being devoured by fish, underscoring the gravity of the threat. Yu Beom considered Chairman Jung's threat carefully. He saw it as an opportunity to earn the chairman's trust, a position that could be leveraged for his ultimate revenge later on. Kim, sensing the impending danger, attempted to convince Yu Beom that Chairman Jung was bluffing and implored him to decline the perilous task. Nevertheless, Yu Biom accepted the challenge without hesitation and promptly exited the conference room. As they left the building, Kim offered Yu Biom a ride home. Gratefully, Yu Biom entered the car, thinking that this could be the beginning of a partnership. However, before he could settle in, Kim swiftly pulled out a gun, aiming it directly at him, her intentions shrouded in mystery. Kim's revelation that she had been conducting a background check on Yu Biom since his entry into the company didn't faze him. He had anticipated such a situation arising during his meticulous preparations for revenge. In his quest to unravel the hidden power dynamics of the cryptocurrency world, Yu Biom had gathered an extensive dossier on the players behind the scenes. He explained to Kim that the cryptocurrency world was a complex web of forces, each vying for dominance on the coin board. Were the multi-level pyramid schemes, power derived from group chat rooms, the influence of coin developers, investment banks, and various institutions. But the real game changers were the gangsters <laughs> and violent groups who had been lured by the scent of wealth in recent years, establishing their presence in the coin world. The three major gangs, Souls, One, Busan's, Three Sea Dragon, and those with connections to China known as the Red Door, had manipulated the coin market to amass immense wealth through backdoor dealings. They had then reinvested this money in various legitimate businesses, solidifying their positions in the criminal underworld. Yu Biom had meticulously delved into this world, seeking to dismantle his past connections to these power structures. He began to speak about X, a legendary genius in the realm of cryptocurrency trading. X was the largest whale in the coin world, a figure shrouded in mystery. With a mere 500,001, X had managed to amass several billions, consistently ranking among the world's top cryptocurrency traders. Yet no one knew the true identity of this enigmatic Korean trader. Crafting his narrative, Yu Biom wove a tale of personal tragedy, asserting that X had played a pivotal role in pushing his family to the brink of financial ruin. His father's hospital funds had been entirely depleted by X's machinations. According to Yu Biom's research, team leader Kim had once been engaged to a man she planned to marry. However, her boyfriend had invested their 300 million won savings in funds, only to lose it all due to X. The devastating loss had driven him to take his own life. Yu Biom subtly appealed to Kim's sense of sympathy, suggesting that someone with her past experiences might understand the pain and anger he felt towards X. It was a calculated move, an attempt to sway her perceptions and potentially gain her support in his quest for revenge. Kim, holstering her gun, made a significant gesture by offering Yu Biom a ride home. It was a clear indication that she had chosen to trust him and no longer viewed him as a potential spy. Yu Biom couldn't help but feel a surge of accomplishment, knowing that he had successfully earned Kim's trust with his carefully constructed narrative. However, he was acutely aware that three years prior, when his father had tragically taken his own life, team leader Kim had been a member of One. This revelation meant that Kim was also among Yu Biom's intended targets for revenge, a fact that lay hidden beneath his outward facade of cooperation. A few days after sealing the deal for their risky venture, Yu Biom threw himself into action without any regard for the passage of time. His focus was on maximizing profits from unsuspecting small traders. Kim, entering a storage room one day, was intrigued by Yu Biom's activities there. She discovered him engrossed in the study of various monitoring charts, a sight that caused concern to bubble within her. Kim worried that Yu Biom might be taking things lightly when time was of the essence for their upcoming deal. However, Yu Biom quickly dispelled her concerns. He explained that he was meticulously analyzing charts, news, and blog posts from different coin communities. He was deciphering the shifting psychology of small traders, pinpointing their fears and identifying when their desires reached their zenith. Yu Biom was unwavering in his belief that finding the perfect timing was absolutely crucial 
to executing their plan with flawless precision. Confidence radiated from him as he declared that his calculations were infallible. As the plan day approached, Yu Bayom watched with unwavering focus as the charts spiked upward, marking the resounding success of their operation. Team 2 members showered him with praise and celebrated their newfound profits. Kim, taken aback by Yu Bayom's exceptional competence, began to see him as a formidable force within the organization, prompting her to exercise greater caution in her interactions with him. The seeds of suspicion and wariness had been sown in her mind as she recognized that Yu Biom was not to be underestimated. Yu Biom's inner turmoil weighed heavily on him as Team 2 members continued to revel in their success. He couldn't shake the nagging sense of responsibility for causing others to lose their hard-earned money, understanding that for many it represented their life savings. The thought of people being driven to the brink contemplating suicide due to their actions, troubled him deeply. The ethical implications of their actions gnawed at his conscience. As the celebration carried on, Yu Biom's frustration grew, fueled by memories of his own past involvement in similar schemes. He found their jubilation sickening. When he decided to leave, Kim stopped him, surprised by his lingering disappointment despite their triumphant operation. In an attempt to lighten the mood, she suggested they go out for a drink, but Yu Biom politely declined explaining that he had a parent meeting to attend. Kim's curiosity was piqued as she hadn't known about Yu Biom having a child. Yu Biom corrected her, revealing that it was his little sister who required his attention. At his sister's school, the homeroom teacher informed him of her situation, revealing that she had become the target of bullies. Without hesitation, Yu Biom requested the names of all the bullies. In the schoolyard, the bullies were lamenting their losses in crystal coin. One of the students had suffered significant financial setbacks. As Yu Sung Ah, Yu Biom's little sister, passed by, she coughed accidentally, which the bullies misinterpreted as laughter. In response, they slapped her, causing her to fall. One of the bullies even brandished a paper knife, threatening her. In her distress, Yu Sung Ah called out Oppa, signaling her brother's arrival. Yu Biom stepped forward, his gaze intense and determined, ready to confront the bullies and protect his sister. Yu Biom wasted no time, swiftly knocking down the leader of the bullies. However, Yoon Jun Bai and Kim Byong Jian teamed up against him, believing they could overpower him. But Yu Biom made it look effortless. He punched Byong Jian and kicked Jun Bei, sending both bullies sprawling to the ground. Frustrated by his inability to defeat Yu Biom, the leader of the bullies escalated the situation. He grabbed the paper knife and lunged at Yu Biom's back, attempting to stab him. Yu Biom's concern for his sister had prevented him from seeing the attack coming, and he wondered why his sister was still there despite his earlier explanation. The bully leader struck from behind, rapidly stabbing Yu Biom. To his astonishment, Yu Biom remained undeterred by the assault. As the bully leader caught sight of a tattoo on Yu Biom's back, a wave of terror washed over him, suspecting that Yu Biom might have ties to the Yakuza. Yu Biom, wearing a stern expression, questioned the bully leader about his investment in crystal coin. The revelation of the truth about the coin's manipulation stoked Yu Biom's anger even further. In reality, Yu Biom's anger stemmed from the overwhelming guilt he felt for his involvement in manipulating the coin's price, a scheme that had indirectly affected his sister. He couldn't help but shoulder the blame for the situation that had put her at risk. Terrified by Yu Biom's unyielding gaze, the bullies immediately offered their apologies to Yu Sung. Yu Biom then left the scene, cautioning the bullies never to venture into cryptocurrency investments again, hoping to shield them from becoming victims in the future. Back within the confines of one company's headquarters, Inside Chairman Jung's room, he was taken aback by Kim's suggestion that Yu Biom should join Operation Team 2. Kim firmly believed that Yu Biom possessed the qualifications for their team. However, their conversation was abruptly interrupted by the arrival of another man, Operation Team 1 leader Steven. Steven voiced his opinion that Yu Biom should join Team 1 instead, stating his belief that he could shape Yu Biom into a fierce and ruthless operative. Team 1, as he explained, was considered the foundation of one, consisting of founding contributors who had been part of the organization since the Garabong gambling days. They believed that dealing with coins required a brutal and unyielding nature. Stephen also took the opportunity to mock Kim, insinuating that Team 2's approach was too lenient in their operations. Chairman Jung intervened, putting an end to Stephen's contentious comments. He then turned to Team 3 for their opinion on Yu Biom. Team 3 leader Lee Jimin had no particular stance and was inclined to follow the chairman's decision. Chairman Jung divulged his intentions, revealing that he had a plan in mind. He wanted to eventually transfer Yu Biom to an operational team, but before doing so, he intended to subject Yu Biom to a real test. This revelation left the three team leaders curious, pondering the nature of this forthcoming test and what it might entail. Back at the luxury clothing store, 
You Beyond made the decision to purchase a handbag for his sister, paying for it in full with cash. Yu Sung was taken aback by this extravagant gesture, thinking her brother was acting irrationally. Yu Beyond explained that in today's society, students often judged and bullied those from less privileged backgrounds, and he wanted to ensure his sister wouldn't face such hardships. However, Yu Sung was furious and demanded to know how Yu Biom had come into possession of such a significant amount of money. Yu Biom attempted to deflect her questions by providing a false answer, claiming that he worked for a famous company and received overtime pay. Yu Sung saw through her brother's lie and threw a bag at him, tears welling up in her eyes. She implored Yu Biom to open up and confess everything he had been through, to return to the time when they could study together and be close again. But Yu Biom, with a heavy heart, left his sister in silence. He understood that getting too close to her could put Yu Sung in danger and entangle her in the dark world he had become a part of. Regret weighed on him, knowing that they couldn't go back to the way things used to be. Yu Biom knew he had to focus on two things, either destroy one or be destroyed by them. Suddenly, a group of menacing thugs appeared and approached Yu Sung, attempting to engage her in conversation. Yu Biom sensed that these individuals were far from virtuous and rushed to intervene, but his efforts were abruptly halted by another thug brandishing a knife. He ordered Yu Biom to follow him, leaving him with no choice but to comply. They led Yu Biom to a construction site building, and as they walked, he couldn't help but wonder about their true intentions for capturing him. It didn't take long before one of the thugs spoke up, explaining that they had apprehended Yu Biom because he had disrupted their operation. With a stern tone, the thug demanded the money that Yu Biom had earned from his involvement with Crystal Coin. Back in Chairman Jung's office, he revealed his true intentions to Yu Biom. He explained that another cryptocurrency manipulation organization known as Mindu had suffered substantial losses due to the Crystal Coin operation. Chairman Jung's plan was to leak information about Yu Biom to provoke Mindu into taking action against him. This, Chairman Jung clarified, was a test of Yu Biom's capabilities to handle such high-stakes situations. Whether Yu Biom could emerge unscathed from this perilous predicament would depend entirely on his resourcefulness and resolve. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out Beacon of Hope 8700 who commented, This is just solo leveling from China on our Your Talent is Mine video. Thanks for commenting. In the face of Leader Quan's menacing threats and Q Dong's aggressive actions, Yu Biom stood his ground with unwavering determination. He remained unshaken, confidently asserting that any attempt to harm him would be futile, as all the money remained firmly in the hands of Chairman Jung. Leader Quan, growing increasingly frustrated by Yu Biom's fearless demeanor, ordered Q Dong to proceed with his menacing plan, hoping to break Yu Biom's resolve. However, even after an extended period of intense tension, Yu Biom continued to dis display remarkable fearlessness, refusing to succumb to their intimidation tactics. Yu Biom understood that the Mindu organization was unlikely to take direct action against one company, as doing so would essentially declare war, leading to consequences that neither side was willing to bear. Mindu's objective became apparent as they aimed to blackmail Yu Biom in exchange for information about one's internal affairs. Yu Biom showcasing his deep knowledge of Mindu's motives, pointed out that Mindu was desperate to gain an advantage over one, which was why they had invested in Crystal Coin. He further revealed details about Mindu's criminal history, highlighting their past involvement in selling counterfeit second-hand cars and defrauding elderly individuals. Yu Biom emphasized that Mindu's agents had refrained from taking lives in the past decade, making their blackmail a mere bluff. Unfazed by Mindu's threats, Yu Biom decided to take a bold stance and counter-threaten them, claiming that he would be the one to sell their lives. Mindu's agents were taken aback by his audacious words. Yu Biom went on to assert that he was the mastermind behind the manipulation of Crystal Coin, and warned them that if one were to discover that they had lost a key figure responsible for manipulating the next coin, he would retaliate swiftly and decisively against Mindu. Yu Biom demanded a sum of 100 million won to pretend that the events of that day had never occurred. Leader Quan growing increasingly agitated, responded angrily. Sensing an opportunity, Yu Biom abruptly increased his demand to 200 million won. Leader Quan, losing patience, made a fateful decision to eliminate Yu Biom in a way that would appear accidental. However, Yu Biom swiftly identified Leader Quan's weak fighting posture and skillfully maneuvered to make him stumble and fall. Yu Biom then seized the knife and held it to Leader Quan's head taking him hostage. He ordered the red-haired thug to operate the tower lift, and with no choice but to comply, the red-haired thug obeyed Yu Biom's command, allowing him to escape. Leader Quan, frustrated by their failure to capture Yu Biom, recognized that Yu Biom possessed exceptional intelligence and had meticulously planned his escape, even exploiting the lowest-ranking member of their group 
to operate the tower lift. Leader Quan immediately reported the entire situation to X. Injured and bleeding from his escape, Yu Biom hurriedly sought medical attention. As he made his way, he suddenly heard a familiar voice calling his name. To his surprise, Yu Biom encountered his former university colleague, Jung Soman, who had studied in the Department of Police Administration. Yu Biom remembered her as the girl who had invited him to the club meeting before the extra coin case. Relieved and exhausted, Yu Biom fell unconscious. Jung Soman, concerned for his well-being, decided to take him to her home. When Yu Biom woke up, he found himself in an unfamiliar place, with Soman offering him a warm cup of tea. Soman couldn't help but express her surprise at how much Yu Biom had changed since they last met, and she was curious about why he had dropped out of university so suddenly. Yu Biom, without saying a word, abruptly left Soman's house, leaving her behind. Soman attempted to stop him, but her efforts were in vain. She couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness as she watched him go, holding onto his name card. Chairman Jung, with a smile, congratulated Yu Biom for passing the test. Yu Biom had finally achieved his goal of meeting Chairman Jung in person, after three long years of plotting his revenge, Chairman Jung offered Yu Biom the opportunity to join any of the teams within the organization, but Yu Biom left the decision in Chairman Jung's hands. However, Chairman Jung had a different idea in mind. He suggested that Yu Biom should aim even higher, not just to join one of the existing teams, but to surpass them all. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps. Chairman Jung's revelation had sent shockwaves through Yu Beom's world. He learned that there had been a significant leak of information from their secretive organization. One, the breach had compromised only the instructions given to the team leaders, leaving the core of their operations intact. Suspicion had fallen squarely on the three team leaders, and Chairman Jung believed that a spy lurked among them, undermining their trust, jeopardizing the integrity of one. Intriguingly, Chairman Jung had a proposition for Yu Beom. He offered him a coveted team leader position within one if he could successfully identify and eliminate the spy within their ranks. It was an opportunity for Yu Biom to prove his loyalty and worth to the organization, a chance to ascend to a position of power and influence. Eager to prove himself and solidify his standing within, one, Yu Biom readily agreed to Chairman Jung's offer, his determination burning brightly. Meanwhile, in a small, unassuming police station, Lieutenant Soman, a member of the National Police Agency's intellectual crime team, was engrossed in her relentless pursuit of the truth. She had discovered that Yu Biom was indeed connected to one company, a revelation that only intensified her suspicions about Chairman Jung. Despite her co-worker's well-intentioned advice to let go of the investigation and join them for lunch, Soman's resolve remained unshaken. She was determined to uncover the hidden layers of one company and reveal the secrets that had thus far eluded her grasp. Back within the clandestine world of one, Yu Biom was resolute in his mission to identify the spy among the team leaders. He knew that this task required careful analysis and a discerning eye. He met with Steven, an old and trusted member of the organization with a storied history as a gangster. Yu Biom assessed Steven, recognizing the unlikelihood of him being the spy due to his extensive history and loyalty to one. Their meeting took place in a private room within a dimly lit pub, an inconspicuous setting for their clandestine discussions. The purpose of their gathering was to meet their client, Bak Hoon, the vice chairman of Bitmain, a significant player in the world of cryptocurrency. However, from the outset, it was clear that Bak Hoon was far from an easy client to handle. His frustration grew evident. He vented it by hurling an apple at Yu Biom's head, a provocative act intended to assert his dominance. Bak Hoon then proposed a demeaning test ordering Yu Biom to urinate in the room, promising a certificate of commendation for their amazing coin if he complied. The tension in the room escalated further when a waiter unexpectedly entered, attempting to serve their food. Bak Hoon's anger intensified at the intrusion, and he berated the hapless waiter, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere for all present. As Bak Hoon's anger reached its peak, he expressed his desire to use Yu Biom as a punching bag, an act that was meant to further degrade Yu Biom. Undeterred by the impending humiliation, Yu Biom sought Steven's permission for a daring counterproposal to turn the tables and use Bak Hoon as his punching bag instead. The unexpected turn of events hung in the air, setting the stage for a potentially explosive confrontation. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Mafia or Yakuza? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. The punching bag event had commenced, and the room was charged with an air of anticipation. Bayek Hoon, fueled by anger and desperation, relentlessly delivered punches to Yu Biom's face, each strike imbued with the weight of his determination. However, Yu Biom remained unfazed, his composure unwavering. He even added an element of humor to the situation, playfully scoring Bayek Hoon's punches with a pitiful rating, as if it were a contest of mere amusement. 
Bai Kun, exhausted and terrified, had no choice but to return home, nursing his wounded pride and battered ego. He wasted no time in reporting the harrowing incident to his father, who was not only a formidable presence, but also a powerful and influential figure in their world. Bai Kun's father was furious upon hearing what had transpired, and his anger knew no bounds. He immediately contacted Chairman Jung the head of one, demanding an explanation and swift retribution for the assault on his son. Chairman Jung, a shrewd and calculating leader, realized the gravity of the situation. They had crossed a dangerous line. The consequences of their actions could jeopardize the stability of one and the precarious balance they had maintained within the criminal underworld. In response, Chairman Jung called for an emergency meeting with Yu Biom, Stephen, and other top members of one, to discuss the fallout from the incident and how to handle Bai Kun's powerful and vengeful family. During the meeting, tensions ran high as the members of One engaged in a spirited debate over the best course of action. Yu Biom, having demonstrated his physical prowess and unyielding determination during the punching bag event, argued passionately that they should stand their ground and not yield to the pressure exerted by Bai Kun's family. He believed that conceding now would only embolden their rivals and undermine the reputation of one. However, other members of one were more cautious, recognizing the potential repercussions of antagonizing such a powerful adversary. They advocated for a more conciliatory approach, suggesting that they should seek to make amends with Bekhun's family and attempt to resolve the situation peacefully. They feared that provoking a feud with a family of such influence could have devastating consequences. Chairman Young a man known for his ability to navigate treacherous waters, listened to both sides of the argument, but remained silent, deep in contemplation. The fate of One and Yu Beom's position within the organization now hung precariously in the balance. They anxiously awaited Chairman Jung's decision on how to deal with this unprecedented crisis. The atmosphere in the chairman's room grew even more charged, as Chairman Jung finally addressed the urgent situation. He made it abundantly clear that they could not afford to hand over the person responsible for the assault on Bak Hoon's son. Doing so would be a sign of weakness, a concession that could invite further challenges from rival organizations and ultimately undermine ones standing in the criminal underworld. The stakes had never been higher, and the decisions made in the coming days would shape the destiny of one and its members. Yu Biom remained outwardly silent, but internally his mind was a whirlwind of thoughts and calculations. He understood that Chairman Jung's decision regarding the situation would not only shape the future of one, but also have a significant impact on his own standing within the organization. The stakes were high, and the consequences of their choices weighed heavily on everyone present. Chairman Jung, the authoritative figure presiding over the meeting, continued to deliberate with his top team members, Kim, Stephen, and Lee Ji Min, each with their unique perspectives and experiences, provided input on the best course of action. The room was permeated with an air of tension as they navigated the treacherous waters of their predicament. It was a pivotal moment that would determine the fate of one and the extent to which they were willing to protect their own. The room's ambience, with its rich oak paneling and dim lighting, added to the gravity of the situation. A conference table, a symbol of power and decision-making, stood as a focal point where their fates hung in the balance. As they awaited Chairman Jung's final decision, tensions ran high. The members of One braced themselves for the consequences of their actions, fully aware of the potential fallout from their choices. Yu Biom, in particular, felt the weight of his involvement in the assault on Bak Hoon's son as he grappled with the realization that his actions had placed him squarely in the midst of the unfolding crisis. Chairman Jung's expression shifted as he addressed the disconcerting topic at hand. Concern and curiosity intermingled on his face as he leaned forward in his plush leather chair, his penetrating gaze taking in the reactions of those gathered around the table. His voice, marked by urgency, painted a vivid and unsettling picture of the looming threat posed by Bak Hui the notorious CEO of Bitmain, Bakui's reputation as a formidable adversary with a history of ruthless tactics, even the collection of ancient, torturous devices from the Middle Ages, sent shivers down their spines. The realization of the dire situation they found themselves in hung heavily in the air, leaving them with a chilling prospect of survival, with odds stacked at a mere one in ten. Rejecting Bakui's demands could mean plunging headlong into a brutal and all-consuming conflict. Amidst the grim reality of their situation, Yu Beom's thoughts raced as he considered his options. For a fleeting moment, he contemplated confessing to the assault on the vice chairman, bearing the burden of responsibility for their actions. The weight of the situation pressed upon him, and he could feel the expectant eyes of the group on him, awaiting a decision. Yet, as he wrestled with his conscience, a reassuring voice cut through the tension. It was Stephen, the steadfast and enigmatic figure in the room who intervened. His voice, calm and measured, took responsibility for the violent act, 
urging Yu Biom to remain inconspicuous and avoid incriminating himself. As Yu Biom observed Stephen's unwavering determination, he couldn't help but wonder about his motives and the depths of his commitment to their cause. Why is Stephen trying to appear so strong and unyielding in this situation? Yu Biom pondered silently. Despite Stephen's selfless willingness to face torture and worse for the sake of the group, Yu Biom harbored an alternative plan, a secret strategy taking shape in his mind. He cleared his throat, drawing the attention of those around the table, their curious glances meeting his determined gaze. In that critical moment, Yu Biom unfolded his audacious plan to take down the white monster, setting in motion a series of events that would test the limits of their resolve and the depths of their courage. Yu Biom had meticulously crafted his strategy, aware that revealing all the details at once would be premature. Leaning forward, his voice unwavering, he expressed his willingness to gradually unveil the plan. However, he made it clear that for this plan to succeed, he needed something essential, a nod of approval from the chairman of one company, Chairman Jung. His words hung in the air, and all eyes in the room turned to Chairman Jung, the man whose decision would ultimately shape the course of their mission. Yu Biom made a direct request, proposing that he should lead the three team leaders in resolving the issue with the white monster. Kim, one of the team leaders, seemed to disagree, her skepticism evident in the furrows on her brow. Yu Biom's status as a newcomer in one company played a part in her doubt. Undeterred, Yu Biom countered Kim's skepticism with a pointed question, challenging her to present a better plan. After a brief pause, Chairman Jung finally spoke, his deep voice resonating with authority and experience as he agreed to Yu Biom's request to lead the mission. However, he didn't mince words when he issued a stern warning. If you fail to destroy the white monster, Chairman Jung's voice held a note of finality. The consequences will be dire. With their mission now officially set in motion, Yu Biom wasted no time. His first order to the three team leaders was straightforward. Inspect their own computers. The request initially hung in the air met with disbelief and resistance. However, Yu Biom's unwavering gaze and probing questions left them with no choice but to comply, their reluctance palpable. Chairman Jung, the silent observer throughout this exchange, couldn't help but feel a growing admiration for Yu Biom's determination and audacity. He recognized the young man's unwavering commitment, not only to take on the white monster, but also to unearth the spy hidden among them. Chairman Jung couldn't help but wonder just how far Yu Biom was willing to go to achieve their shared goals. As the meeting concluded and they ventured outside the headquarters, the cool night air enveloped them. Stephen and Yu Biom found a quiet moment, taking refuge in the comforting haze of cigarette smoke. Stephen's gratitude was evident in his eyes as he expressed his heartfelt thanks to Yu Biom. Yu Biom, ever humble, brushed it off with a gracious smile. It's not about saving you. Yu Biom insisted, his voice tinged with sincerity. Yet despite Yu Biom's attempts to downplay his actions, something significant had shifted between them. Stephen felt a deep and unspoken connection, a bond that had been forged in the crucible of their shared mission. He looked at Yu Biom and made a heartfelt declaration. From now on, Stephen declared, a genuine smile playing on his lips, you're my brother. In the days that followed, Yu Biom and Stephen found solace in each other's company, they laughed together, watched movies late into the night, shared drinks, and even indulged in competitive video game sessions. Their camaraderie grew stronger with each passing moment, fostering a sense of trust and friendship that transcended their dangerous mission. As the clock struck 9 p.m. on a particularly quiet evening, signaling the end of another day filled with intrigue and danger, Stephen bid farewell to Yu Biom and headed back to his own home. Alone with his thoughts, Yu Biom couldn't shake the nagging feeling that there was something more to Stephen than met the eye. And then, in a sudden revelation, a startling truth struck him. Out of the shadows, a young boy named Yong Min appeared, greeting Stephen with an affectionate smile. Dad! The child exclaimed. And Stephen's warm response sent shockwaves through Yu Biom's mind, leaving him with a plethora of questions and a newfound curiosity about his friend and brother-in-arms. Yu Biom's research on Stephen had yielded no information about him being married or having a family. The revelation that Stephen led a double life destroying other families while seemingly leading a happy one of his own, filled Yu Bayom with a sense of disgust. The truth was more complex than he had ever imagined, and it left Yu Bayom grappling with conflicting emotions as he tried to make sense of the enigma that was Stephen. Despite the unsettling revelation about Stephen's hidden life, he extended a warm invitation to Yu Bayom to visit his house and share a meal together. The air inside Stephen's cozy home was filled with the enticing aroma of homemade food, a meal prepared with care. Stephen proudly mentioned that it was Yong Min's favorite dish. However, their anticipated dinner took an unexpected turn when Yong Min, the child who had earlier referred to Stephen as dad, rejected the meal and retreated to his room, leaving Yu Biom puzzled. Curiosity gnawed at Yu Biom. He couldn't help but inquire about the whereabouts of Stephen's wife. After all, he had just witnessed Stephen interacting with a child who clearly regarded him 
as his father. To you beyond surprise, Stephen appeared confused by the question and clarified that he was still unmarried. The mystery deepened. Yubiyam's mind raced with questions about the child's true identity. Unable to contain his curiosity, Yubiyam prodded further, prompting Stephen to reveal a dark and unsettling story from his past. He explained that the child he had interacted with was the son of his deceased colleague, a revelation that sent shivers down Yubiyom's spine. As Stephen continued, he delved into the grim details of their shared history, recounting how he and his colleague had once been close and trusted allies within one. However, their alliance had taken a sinister turn when they uncovered the shocking truth. Their colleague had been an undercover police officer. In a chilling and disturbing confession, Stephen admitted to having killed his colleague, an act that left you beyond speechless. What made the revelation even more haunting was the fact that the colleague's young son had been a helpless witness to this horrifying act of violence. You beyond couldn't shake the unease that settled in the pit of his stomach. Despite the enjoyable time they had shared earlier, he couldn't ignore the dark realities of their shared lifestyle. It was becoming increasingly clear that Stephen was far from a good person. As the evening wore on, you beyond prepared to take his leave. However, Stephen persisted in inviting him to stay overnight, eager to learn more about the plan. You beyond declined, emphasizing the need for a good night's rest before their impending confrontation with the white monster. He understood the risks associated with revealing their strategy prematurely and remained steadfast in his decision to keep their plan closely guarded. The next day, at the white monster's residence, the tension in the air was palpable as the bodyguard informed the president of Yu Biom's impending arrival. With a sense of foreboding, the white monster granted permission for Yu Biom to enter setting the stage for a high-stakes showdown. As Yu Biom stepped into the imposing house, his greeting to the white monster was polite and professional. He met the infamous figure with a demeanor that spoke of bravery, ready to face the daunting consequences that lay ahead. The white monster, a shrewd and calculating man, couldn't help but be impressed by Yu Biom's initial display of courage. He recognized in Yu Biom a man who was prepared to confront whatever challenges lay in his path inside the opulent residence. The vice president, a looming presence in the room, insisted to his father, the white monster, that Yu Biom should be killed for his transgressions. However, the white monster, ever mindful of the law, calmly explained that taking a human life was illegal. Instead, he ordered his henchmen to bring forth a menacing instrument of torture, an SS-class Iron Maiden. The tension in the room thickened as the white monster instructed Yu Biom to enter the menacing device. Initially, Yu Biom remained silent, and the white monster couldn't help but believe that Yu Biom's ego had taken control of his body. With a glint of anticipation in his eyes, the white monster drew his katana ready to strike. Then, in a surprising turn of events, Yubiyam found his voice and proposed a deal that left not only the vice president, but also everyone else in the room bewildered, setting the stage for a high-stakes negotiation that would shape the course of their dangerous confrontation. The moment Yubiyam had been waiting for had finally arrived. With a calm and determined demeanor, he reached for his sleek tablet, and the digital screen obediently flickered to life, illuminating the core of his meticulously crafted proposal. He embarked on a journey to unravel the intricate web surrounding the stablecoin issued by the notorious Bitmain, with a particular focus on their flagship cryptocurrency, the main coin. At first glance, this digital currency seemed like a paragon of stability and reliability, a shining beacon in the volatile world of cryptocurrencies. However, as Yu Biom delved deeper into his research, a much darker and sinister truth began to emerge. His painstaking investigation had meticulously peeled back the layers of deception, unveiling a disturbing reality hidden beneath the surface. The main coin, despite its lofty claims and inflated market value, was, in essence, nothing more than a well-orchestrated scam, a carefully crafted facade intended to lure unsuspecting investors into a trap. The revelation of this fraudulent scheme was not merely an expose, it was a damning indictment of the entire operation that powered Bitmain. Rewinding the clock to a few hours earlier, back at their secret headquarters, Stephen had been inquisitive about the specifics of Yu Biom's audacious plan. Yu Biom had outlined his strategy, explaining that they wouldn't confront White Monster directly, but instead aim to undermine the very foundations upon which Bitmain stood. Kim, one of their associates, had voiced his skepticism regarding the feasibility of dismantling such a formidable entity. Yu Biom had calmly and confidently clarified his viewpoint, elucidating that Bitmain was far more than just a cryptocurrency exchange. It was a smokescreen, a front for international criminal organizations deeply entrenched in money laundering activities. Yu Biom had gone on to detail the inner workings of this nefarious operation. They've used the main coin as a tool for their illicit transactions. He had explained, on the surface, it appears to be a stable and trustworthy asset, making it the perfect channel for money laundering. But upon closer inspection, 
its foundational instability becomes apparent. The reserve assets are in disarray. Its guarantee system is nothing short of a sham. Yet the white monster has masterfully portrayed it as a viable stable coin, successfully deceiving everyone involved. He had then pointed out a critical vulnerability. The success of this deception depends on the unwavering trust of these foreign criminal organizations in the white monster's reputation. Bitmain utilizes the main coin as collateral, expanding its influence. If these entities were to discover the truth, trigger a mass exodus of clients, ultimately leading to the collapse of Bitmain, that is the white monster's Achilles heel. As Ubiom's revelations hung heavily in the air, a palpable tension filled the room. The stakes of their impending confrontation with the enigmatic white monster were now glaringly evident. In the present moment, White Monster, seemingly unfazed by Yu Beom's expose, continued to maintain his composure. He coolly instructed Yu Beom to report these damning findings to his VIP guests, fully aware of Yu Beom's lack of access to the closely guarded and encrypted contact information of these influential individuals. Unperturbed, White Monster brandished his katana, a symbol of his readiness to eliminate any potential threat. Yu Beom, however, had one last ace up his sleeve. With a swift and deliberate movement, he revealed another page on his tablet, displaying the contact information of all 32 VIP guests, a diverse group hailing from various countries and backgrounds, each deeply enmeshed in the world of international crime. This unforeseen revelation momentarily halted White Monster's attack as he struggled to comprehend how Yu Biom had managed to acquire such closely guarded and sensitive information. Yu Biom, ever the strategist, confessed to having infiltrated the vice president's computer earlier, securing the vital information needed for his audacious plan. Outside, Stephen and Kim, keeping a watchful eye on the unfolding drama, reflected on Yu Biom's every move, their anticipation tangible. Kim, intrigued by the audacity of Yu Beom's plan, inquired about the specifics. Stephen recounted their earlier encounter with Bai Kun, the vice president, at a dimly lit local pub, Yu Biom had cleverly incapacitated Bakun, seizing the opportunity to gain unauthorized access to his computer and extract the highly sought-after contact information of these international criminal networks. Kim expressed a profound sense of relief at their successful acquisition of such crucial data. However, Stephen added a shocking twist to the tale. They had found no useful information on Bayakun's computer. The contact information presented to White Monster was an elaborate fabrication, a testament to Yu Biom's exceptional charisma and cunning. Both Kim and Stephen marveled at Yu Biom's strategic acumen, particularly considering his status as a relative newcomer to their intricate world. In essence, Yu Biom had executed a masterful deception against seasoned scammers, outsmarting even the most seasoned of criminals. White Monster, now with his katana set aside, expressed his disappointment in his son's inability to detect the ruse. He then turned his attention back to Yu Biom and asked him what he desired in return for his remarkable feat. Surprisingly, Yu Biom's request caught both Stephen and Kim off guard. He demanded that three of their coins be listed on the Bitmain platform, an unexpected deviation from their original plan. White Monster initially agreed to Yu Biom's demand, but as he was about to formalize the agreement, he received an anonymous message claiming that Yu Biom's contact list was fake. This shocking revelation sent shockwaves through the room, plunging everyone into a maelstrom of confusion and uncertainty, leaving Yu Biom and his allies to grapple with this unforeseen complication and its potential ramifications. Yu Biom's sharp intellect and keen perception allowed him to piece together the unfolding situation with remarkable acumen. As the tense negotiations between Bitmain and One progressed, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was a spy lurking among them, a hidden hand working to undermine their delicate truce. The spy had discreetly dispatched a message to their enigmatic handler, White Monster, with the aim of sabotaging the negotiations, and Yu Beom's instincts told him that this was a pivotal moment. White Monster, a figure renowned for his cunning and guile, seized the opportunity to cast doubt on Yu Beom's claims. He suggested that they should verify the authenticity of the contact list information, a move that further muddied the already treacherous waters of their negotiations. White Monster's intention was clear. He sought to sow chaos and mistrust exploiting any perceived weakness in their adversary. In a swift and determined act, Yu Biom reached for his smartphone and played an audio recording. This recording held a gravity beyond measure. It was a damning testament to the extent of Bitmain's involvement in illicit money laundering activities. The chilling revelations contained within the recording hung heavily in the air, and Yu Biom wielded this information like a weapon, brandishing it as a threat to expose White Monster and his darkest secrets to the assembled VIP guests. The vice chairman, overcome by a sudden surge of anger, lashed out at Yu Biom, hurling accusations of being a scam artist. However, White Monster remained eerily composed, 
convinced that Ubiom's actions had inadvertently confirmed the falseness of the contact information in White Monster's calculating mind. The solution was simple. Eliminate Ubiom and seize the recording, thereby erasing all evidence of their wrongdoing. Ubiom, however, was quick to clarify the misunderstanding. He stood his ground, unwaveringly asserting the authenticity of the contact information. He revealed that he had scheduled the information to be sent within the hour, leaving White Monster taken aback by the sudden possibility that Ubiom might be telling the truth. Meanwhile, Stephen and Kim, the onlookers, watched in bewildered silence, their confusion deepening as Ubiom's narrative unfolded before them. White Monster's response was a menacing laughter that reverberated through the room, sending shivers down Ubiom's spine. The question that lingered in the air was whether White Monster had completely lost his grip on reality. The cold authority, he issued orders to his men to surround Ubiom, boldly declaring his indifference to any potential fallout, confident in his ability to eliminate Ubiom within the hour. Suddenly, the already tense atmosphere was shattered as one of White Monster's men swung a heavy pipe toward Ubiom. Displaying remarkable reflexes, Ubiom skillfully dodged the attack and countered swiftly, incapacitating his assailant. From a discreet distance, Stephen, who had been closely monitoring the situation, inquired if Ubiom required backup. Ubiom, with unyielding resolve, declined the offer of reinforcements. He was determined to handle the situation alone, fully aware that calling for backup would escalate the conflict with White Monster to an all-out war. Stephen, though concerned for Ubiom's safety, respected his decision and stood ready to initiate Plan B if needed. Ubiom now stood surrounded by White Monster's gangsters, his demeanor unshaken despite the overwhelming odds against him. In a sudden twist of events, the room was plunged into darkness as the lights went out. Amidst the ensuing chaos, the gangsters scrambled to light their lighters, only to discover that Ubiom had vanished, along with the contract and the stamp, leaving them in disarray and disbelief. Fueled by anger and desperation, White Monster issued a frantic command to his henchmen, adamant that the contract must not leave the house. Ubiom, concealed behind a wall, was momentarily spotted by one of the gangsters, prompting a near miss with a swung pipe that alerted the others to his location, leading to a tense confrontation. Ubiom, now surrounded by six assailants, showcased his formidable combat prowess, deftly defending himself against multiple attackers. However, a sudden and brutal punch to his stomach momentarily stunned him, leaving him vulnerable to further attacks. At this critical juncture, a new and imposing figure entered the fray, Little Giant, a massive and formidable mercenary. Ubiom realized the gravity of facing this new adversary, just as Little Giant prepared to deliver a devastating blow. An unexpected punch from an unseen assailant disrupted the fight. To everyone's astonishment, it was Steven who emerged, coming to Ubiom's aid. Despite Ubiom's earlier insistence on handling the situation alone, Steven couldn't stand idly by. He declared Ubiom as his brother, emphasizing the importance of their bond and the necessity of sticking together. In a breathtaking display of skill and power, Steven, an SS danger-level fighter, swiftly subdued Little Giant. Together, Steven and Ubiom fought off the remaining gangsters, making a strategic retreat from the precarious situation. Following their daring escape, negotiations between Bitmain and One resumed, now heavily influenced by the audio recording and the critical information they possessed. Under the relentless pressure, White Monster eventually conceded, leading to the successful publication of One's Three Coins on the Bitmain platform. This strategic victory not only bolstered One's influence, but also enticed investors, resulting in significant capital gains. However, the triumph weighed heavily on Ubiom's conscience. As he reflected on the consequences of their actions for innocent investors, grappled with the moral implications of their victory. The following day, Ubiom embarked on the same lorry used by the leader the previous day, fully prepared for any interference from the spy in their midst. He had confided in Stephen, the one person he trusted not to be the spy, about the actual status of the contact information. In a calculated move, Ubiom allowed the spy to believe that the information was fake, setting the stage for the next phase of their intricate plan. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.